You might be thinking driving a car is wasted time. Sitting in a train is also wasted time, just as doing some household chores. But what if I told you that these and many other similar activities are not at all wasted, but rather worth twice their time? So let me share the most common of these everyday activities and how you can turn them around from seemingly wasted and useless to highly productive and valuable. Hi friends, my name is Leah and I'm here to share tips and tricks to progress and constantly develop yourself, your skills and your career. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and activate the bell. Before we look into the practices and tools that will help you to never waste time again, let's explore the situations and activities where you might feel wasting time. So first of all, that's everything around transportation. For example, driving a car, sitting on the drain, the subway or the bus, sitting on the plane or simply walking somewhere. Of course, these activities are necessary to reach a destination, but oftentimes quite tedious. Similar, there are household chores that need to be done, but feel like a waste of time, such as grocery shopping, cleaning the house or ironing laundry. These things do not require a lot of brain capacity, but need full body power. Also, there are physical activities, such as doing some cardio on the treadmill or spinning bike or doing some stretching. Very purposeful activities, but at the same time, they can be quite monotonous. And Finally, there are waiting times in everyday situations. For example, when sitting in the doctor's waiting room or when waiting for the bus or the train to come. All these situations are seemingly useless, wasting a lot of time. But let me show you how you can make use of these time slots and not only get from A, to be or doing some exercise, but at the same time, use that time very productively to get even more out of these slots. Let's first look at these activities where you need to be physically present and can only listen in parallel, such as when being on a car on being on the treadmill. The easiest thing you can do in parallel is listening to an audiobook or a summary there. The most prominent apps for listening to audiobooks are probably Audible or BookBeat. At least from Audible, I know that they also have a driving mode that has special settings for when driving a car, such as a simplified screen. But there's also Blinkist, for example, an app that summarizes the content of an entire book within 15 minutes. Using this app, you do not even have an excuse to not turn on your audiobook for a very short car drive. Similar to listening to audiobooks, you can obviously also listen to the news or podcasts. You just need your phone and a suitable app. And the most prominent ones are probably Spotify or Apple Music, where you can listen to countless podcasts or news shows. As you might know, there are not only entertainment formats, but also formats and shows where either latest news on a topic are shared, current events are being discussed, or general knowledge being discussed as well. In case you do not want to listen to something but still make use of your idle time whilst driving a car or doing some household chores, you can also make some calls. On the one side, you can make private calls and talk to friends and family. Either you have planned those calls or you just want to randomly call a friend or your mom who will definitely be delighted about your spontaneous reach out. If you are on the road during office hours, you can also dial in to some meetings or conferences for work. In this case, Case, however, make sure you do not need to write notes, present something or look at something that's shared in the meeting since you will only be able to listen and speak but not write or share. In case there are still some critical things being shared, you could just ask another colleague to dial in as well or to take some notes and screenshots for you to review afterwards. If you're not in the mood to listen an audiobook nor to have some calls, you can also just use the idle time and brainstorm on some topics or think through some of your ideas projects or plans. So from my own experience, I can tell that my brain works really well and gets quite creative when I'm doing some monotonous tasks such as driving a car or being on the treadmill. It seems as if performing such tedious tasks where your body is an autopilot, your brain can free up some space for other creative work since it does not have to steer the body as well. Let me know in the comments if you have experienced the same thing in the past as well. Now let's look at those activities where you can not only listen but also do something in parallel, such as when sitting on the train or plane or when waiting in a queue. Probably the easiest thing you can do 
do and almost everyone is already doing nowadays is to answer chat messages or emails. So if you look around in the subway or at the airport when waiting for boarding, most of the people use their smartphones. However, please be cautious about what you're doing. If you want to make use of that seemingly wasted time, you should be very specific and actually deal with something required and not look at one meme after another, even though this might be nice as well. So just try to first answer all open chat messages and easy to answer emails before moving to another thing. Once finished with answering all messages, you can continue to complete simple tasks that can also be done just by using your phone. You could make dinner reservations, book a rental car or order dinner. These are super simple and easy tasks that pile up on your to-do list but just need to be done. Again, one step further, after having answered all your emails and easy tasks, you could just go on with some simple research. That can be done either on your phone, but also on your laptop or iPad, for example, when sitting on the train. So let's say you need to do some market research for an upcoming project at work or for a private event or trip, which basically means browsing through the internet in search for the best information on your topic or problem. And that can very well be done when being on the go as well, without the need for a proper a desk setup with multiple screens or the like. If you have a bit more time, you can start to work on some more complex tasks as well. For example, when being on the train or plane for several hours, you can use that time to work on project proposals, financial models, contracts, or any other more time-consuming activity. Just remember that you will still not have a proper desk setup and only your laptop screen. That's why you should choose tasks that can also be easily performed in that way without requiring more equipment besides a small screen, a keyboard and your brain power. Last but not least, let's not forget that we can also read a physical book or a magazine. Even if it's quite convenient to listen to an audiobook or podcast, not having to carry around heavy books or newspapers, we can still do that. And to be fair, sometimes I also prefer reading a physical book just because it feels very nice turning over real pages or it's sometimes even more convenient reading a book with many charts or illustrations that can sometimes not perfectly be described in an audiobook. So if you found that video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, feel free to check out my other videos with helpful tips on self-development and practical career advice. Thanks for watching and see you next time.